to join us on call-in Fridays. Welcome, Dana. And um, Good morning. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to give people a little background about why I decided. Now, Dana cannot speak, so I'm not going to ask him any questions. He probably has to correct me if I say something incorrectly. But the reason, when I say in my intro, every voice matters, I seriously mean that. The people that listen to this show that disagree with Dana please call. We need to have conversations. I honestly don't want to have private conversations with people. I am busy off the air about this. I'm researching, and if you want to engage us, please call, because we want people out there who think they know that radiation is good for us, because we're not going to yell at you and argue and insult you. We're going to give you studies we're going to tell you where you can go, what universities you can look at. If you go there and you can't do your own research and find it, call us back and we'll give you copies of the studies we have. But don't ask us to just start feeding you our work. The import, uh, do you agree with that, Dana? Oh, well, you know me. <laughs> I'll argue with anybody. I'll fight with anybody. I'll listen to well, anybody. I don't I'll try to, to help argue. anybody. On my show, I don't want you to No, argue. I'm not arguing. Uh, and I don't want you to Since fight. I seriously am so oh, I hear you. against name calling. Although I have to say, I do a bit of it my own with uh, the Clintons, <laughs> who I do we want all to talk do. about today. We're humans. I this, heard this is what we do. We I try to pretend we're somebody else, and we try to give ourselves this this prestigious positions. To well, not, it's not even not that. Who, the you know what I'm saying? Family we, are quite criminal. Some people react to controversy. Some people like uh, the argument. Some people like the calm, cool, collect, and some people don't even care, right? They're just there to try to Amen to that. do something. Amen to that. So what I'm saying here, finally, is I'm encouraging our listeners to call. And there's also a lot of fans of Dana's who may have had questions, and you can just call us and ask us questions about stuff, because Dana knows he's hell of a... I'd ra rather somebody attack me, because then that, that's when I'm on my, in my best, but and that shows the the ignorance of the other side, but it shows the ignorance of me sometimes, too. And yeah, that's, that's why like, it's that's not good. arguing. I mean, I'm good for uh, good uh, dis discourse. I'm good up for that. But where it gets to be like, you've got to <laughs> be an imbecile because you can't fucking understand my... my if you got the, if they got an education, they know better, and you still can't. Not necessarily. It, You're help. making a lot of assumptions there. No, they, it's just you can't help these people. I've done it too many times. You look, can't help certain people. You, you know just when they turn help. around, 
have you you've read many uh, scientists journal where they say I used to think nuclear was good but now I really understand that we were lied to as uh, physicists as doctors as whatever biologists we weren't informed of the truth that's what happened to my science teacher she was like uh, I gave and did she go to the streets did she rally did she get out and fight for it no, did she make you know, a difference no, no. She but you school. know what I'm not going to fault her for that <laughs> That's the first step of awareness. People can't get up and start running. It takes a while, and you know what? Unfortunately, what? my first step of awareness was what? <laughs> Me too, actually. That's then I went to I battle. Said. Honestly, the night I had that nightmare, I'll never forget it. May fifth, two thousand and twelve. I mean, it was like clear as day. I saw the sky orange. I opened my window and I was like, "Holy fuck, the kids!" And I woke up like that, and I went to the phone. The Googles and I didn't see anything and I'm like I must be dreaming because it would be all over the place or maybe maybe it wouldn't maybe that's the thing I've discovered over the last three years they they are not going to televise the nuclear meltdown folks the EPA right now and by the way remember last week I said it was July 27th no it is July 25th comments closed July 25th and uh, I do have the docket thing, so I'm going to send it to the producer, the link on where to, where to find it. I asked Drew Kuhn to send it to me, and he did. So important for us to comment because they're about to raise the limits if we have a nuclear meltdown. Did you hear about this, Dana? The EPA mm -hmm. is about to change the rules in the United States so that if we have a nuclear emergency, right. they are going to raise the limits only a little bit, except that iodine-131 will be raised by 3,000, over 3,300 percent. They should be, they, they should be raising the, the curium isotopes, because it's not iodine is the biggest producer, it's the curium from the reactor cores when they're in chain reaction. And after that, the reactor rods will always produce curium. The curium. Curium's like plutonium. It, it reacts the same way. Whereas iodine is compared to any of these isotopes is how do you spell bad but as you how wrote. do you spell curium yeah who knows anymore i is was trying to spell it this morning for some C -U -R reason c-u-r or c-o c-u curium isn't it c-u-r or i-u-m yeah that's kind of a family of cesium right that's how that works curium no curium is that's potassium from uranium Curium, like a cur, that's, that's the um, that's the product of uranium, plutonium. But uh, curium is no different than plutonium or americium or neptunium. These are all really bad stuff. This is the thing that make it. people understand. They're trying to say that a little bit of americium. I saw a study just yesterday, and I didn't print it out. I didn't have time. I was working. I was what was working. it again? About americium. A small amount. It was on the nuclear alert. It was on right, the nuclear I seen alert. That they, now that little, the report said no harm to human health, right? Like they didn't, nobody was exposed. I got the dog studies on that. They use americium in dog studies. Two forty one. How, how kill the dogs the same way as plutonium? Right how away. low can it go? Like how how, how like this? It didn't sh matter apparently. Even down to a hundred microcuries. Yeah, well, to the smallest dose is over uh, 35 years, yeah? No matter what the dose was, it killed the animal every time. Of americium? Americium, neptunium, and plutonium. So how is it that they had said that this was normal, like this was not I can, a... I can show you a, a, a hunter study. You know what? I know how they're scientists. I, I'll bet you with, this is what they're doing. They're aggregating sure the it. They're, they're aggregating it over the whole mass of the, the United States. They're saying this is a little tiny amount, and over the whole mass of the United States, it's not that much. So it's not harmful. Well, if you have a snowstorm in your town and you spread it out instead over the entire country, it wasn't a bad. It wasn't a snowstorm anymore, right? <laughs> but it was a snowstorm for wherever it hit. Honestly, Dana, you know what? The oligarchs really, honestly, did. the universities are just sick. Go ahead. They use 1984 and Brave New World as operating manuals. I mean, when they read those books, they probably went, "Wow, what a brilliant idea! Let's plan these." <laughs> Thank you for the plan, writers. I swear to God, it is really outrageous. When I look at the, our political system and the joke of these nonprofits helping in, the polluters keep open nuclear plants. In every, in every study, 
of uh, man-made radioactive isotopes in every study. For 70 years, the animals died in every country, in every study. No, when it was used on animals, no one, no one, none of them survived. And they're still doing it today. None of them have survived. That's Every what John study. Gottman said in his writing, he's like, what is incredulous is the scientists. Well, they're not going to hurt us because we're not animals, right? Right, but they do that in every other industry. They compare humans to animals in every other industry. The eye, they make the contact lenses. They test every kind of fucking animal. I yeah, have for been ice cream and labs. makeup and stuff like this. And But uh, in this case, every animal died. Every single one, oh. whatever failed throughout history. No animal survived. And so, boom, that's the end of that. Well, then again, why do we got terrorist laws? Why do we got nuclear, why are we fighting for nuclear repositories? Why is Australia having citizen juries? Why are people trying to bury it two miles under the ground? Why are people trying to shooting it at the sun? Because it's not like a banana or a potato chip or walking sunshine. Anybody that got an education can't work that part out. Um, I disrespect them. I can't help them. Nobody can help these people. I'm not going to waste a second of my life on those people. I've already been down that road. I've been at this for a long time. You mean attempting And those to people like... are, don't want to learn. They're not interested in learning. Because if they learn the truth, then they have to face their own demons of what they've done in their whole career. Well, and then not, not only that, the then they, they have to... The first oh, question is they have to quit their the, career. The, the, the they cannot the, They cannot yeah. consciously work for those people. Like, when I lived in Los Angeles, you know why I struggled? I had two kids. I struggled. I could have easily gotten a job like my neighbors did at these at Bechtel and Raytheon. And I'm like, I could not take a paycheck from those bastards. There is no way. They're murderers. I mean, honestly, this is what we need is conscientious objectors. We need people willing to say, I'm going to change my lifestyle and get the get out of this. Hey, like, Let me like, give our say, listeners the numbers. It's 718-717-8296. It's 718-717-8296. You're listening to Lonnie Clark and my guest host, Dana Dernford. Uh, from the nuclear, who is the nuclear proctologist, and today is July fifteenth. It's eight twelve in the morning, and you have until probably eight fifty to give us a call. How's hey, that? say you say you got a summer's job. You're a kid. You got a summer's job. You're getting ready to go to college in a couple of years, and you're saving up money. You don't come from a privileged family or something. But anyway, you get a summer job at a at a respiratory re a research institute. Say. Dr. Raymond Gilmet, he's loveless in respiratory research in New Mexico. Now, you got a job there, and your job is to take out the dead dogs and put them in a big vat. And you do that uh, for a couple of summers, and you go off to college, and you get a degree in blah, blah, blah. And they try to tell you that, or you argue with your other friends in class that uh, radiation is not harmful according to this study or that study. But you say, hey, wait a second, I worked in the laboratory, and all we done, all I done was took the dead dogs out that and they told me they've been doing this for 35 years and I was the best guy ever doing it and blah, blah, blah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, then you can't deny it. Then then you wouldn't try to deny it. Then you would have an argument to put up a, a fight against it. But if you don't know that exists or you didn't work in that industry. Yeah, but I don't know. I see what you're saying. Like, the people who, even the ones who maybe passed through it, who couldn't work there and said, screw this, I just can't participate in this no matter even those no, people because they're day. not active they're not actively out there saying wait a minute we've got to stop this insanity well see when i say that people don't get it they don't understand what i said the silence is see, complicity that is it's not silence in that building the dogs get their vocal cords removed because they're screaming in agony because they got all these bone liver and lung tumors and they can't give them uh, painkillers they can't give them anything that will uh, prohibit or interfere with the experiment. They don't want to change the body chemistry, so the dogs are left to die in agony and misery. That's why they take their vocal cords out. Then people would freaking get it. People just walk. It's like when they take the people that are out drunk driving and stuff like that, and make them go to the morgue. Right. So if we done that to the animal kingdom, to the experimental sense, instead of sending kids to the morgue, we sent them down to these research centers where all the dogs are screaming in agony and we, you know, in misery and just. All these big tumors hanging off them. 
Yeah, I actually it's, have Fiji walked into just one gave... of those labs, and it's not just dogs. I mean, that right. one lab did dogs, but I walked into an eye lab uh, no, in my former one of my former jobs. I had to go there as a visitor, and he's like, "Oh, you want to see the lab? We have all these animals, we have <laughs> pigs and ducks and goats." And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, because I want to warn you, some of them are in the middle of some experimentation." I'm like, "Okay." I thought, "Well, okay." That you know, I'm pre I've seen pictures of monkeys with eyesores. Oh my God! I was shocked. I was visibly shaken. I had to. I said, "Look, I can't stay in here." I started crying, and I, I had to get all sanitized. Like I had to wear this whole suit. I had to like go through this whole process to get in there. I was completely sanitized, like a doctor, like really sanitized. And so you walk through. So you won't interfere with the experiment. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I'm not like, so you can take yourself. I had your... no idea. And you know what? To realize this is actually how they operate. There are now we are. There is some movement towards an industry where we're not doing that anymore. Like you know what I mean? That's not the standard and status quo. But you are completely right about these experiments. How long are they going to keep experimenting? They ought to just say enough already. The reason is, is this guy wants a freaking paycheck. He's looking for that answer that John Goffman said was not findable. That's what he's doing. John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin unequivocally, and Linus Pauling. I mean, this is the deal about this. People forget this This was done. You know what I was thinking about, Dana, with this police state that's gone on in America? It's the secrecy that started. After the 50s, when the nuclear... When nuclear was discovered, and they went after it, and they knew it was coming through the Nazis, even before they did the bomb, when they found out about it, the secrecy uh, increased all around the world. And it is the secrecy that started towards the militarization of everything. And it wasn't just people say, well, you know, when George Bush stole the election, or when we started the war, whatever it is, whatever, I, it really, it has gone, as Kevin would say, on Balco, since not just Reaganomics or when Bush stole the election it's really been since the nuclear industry hit a home run man. that's what I think if we just took the money they spent on security we can probably build uh, hospitals for across the country <laughs> just on security that they, they suck up on security hey Lonnie you know Fukushima should we clone humans and give them mechanical hurts? That's what they're doing. That's yeah. what they're planning on doing. I mean, do you listen to uh, Before the First Cup with Jules? You should go back and look at some of the titles. You, if, uh, you, oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, my God. She covers scientific journals and studies. It is like your jaw will drop off. Honestly, like, that's one show you should listen to because you're like, say didn't... what? <laughs> She reads these journals, these articles from these scientific journals. Right. Yeah, they're scary stuff. That's all I read all day. Like, getting the job done in Fukushima is not hard. Hell, Japan's willing to sacrifice six million people that they can find enough. They're willing but, to sacrifice and the homeless a lot. Seems they want everyone the to get it. That's so, why they, they fought the so them. hard, Dama. They want it to be normalized. That's why they're going to have the Olympics there. We were saying they're never going to have the Olympics. Yes, they are. They want everyone to get affected. They're going to spread the love, baby. That's what the whole Zika virus is about. I firmly believe that the Zika whole Zika scandal thing is about covering up exposure of nuclear pollution. Yeah, you the Zika deformities are exact same as uranium deformities. Yes. It's in Fallujah. You know what, how Zika, I came up uh, with this? In Hanford and other places. With this concept, I would love to see the directive the IAEA gave the World Health Organization. I'll bet you too, because in in South America with his Zika virus ooh, spread. You know what? I did just on an instinct. Uranium is not mined. There is no uranium mining in South America. It has been well known. Guess what I found out? It opened up in 2012. They started a bit. That's why uranium is off the charts because they're starting to mine in South America and there are no holds barred, no regulations. Those people are getting microencephaly because they are being affected by uranium mining. So yeah, the, uranium mining is you're not being affected. You're being affected is, is a broad scope, but it's the chemicals that they're using at that process of the stage that is affecting those particular communities. So uranium mine is not nuclear chain reaction. But what it is 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 these incredible, unimaginable amounts of chemicals they have to use to, to get the uranium from the iron ore, and so the communities that uh, the 
Look, we closed down Uranium City here in in Canada and Alberta a number of years back. Uran uranium City, uh, that's all they'd done in that whole city was just uranium. And it was on the other side of a big lake in, up by Alberta where they had that forest fire area. And they, they were only able to get over there in the wintertime and drive across the, the frozen lakes. But studies done throughout the world on, on uranium uh, areas where there's a lot more uranium in some areas showed no increase in deformities or cancers or illnesses because your body can't hold any more natural. Your body's acclimated to a certain amount. Everything on the planet, your clothing, all the materials acclimated to so much natural material like potassium, 40 or rubidium or any of the other natural stuff. And so the whole industry for 70 years has come up with all of these fables and a lot of people, including myself, have fell for it. But when you research it, they fall apart, these fables, and the industry slowly, slowly uh, uncovers itself. And that's what it was all about. It was all about hiding what they knew way back in the 40s. And they spent 70 years enforcing the banana, potato chip, walking in sunshine, getting on an airplane, dental x-rays, chest x-rays. Uh, fable, in comparison of, of the man-made material, and they won't give it up, and they can't give it up. And the minute that they anybody comes out and tells the truth, then everybody else becomes a lawyer. So if one media was to come out and say it's not like a banana, then all the other media has to attack them. It has to work that way. See, so they all have to well, tell that same by, story. This is the same thing. This is one of the things, you know, like I uh, really did not understand until very recently the depths of corruption that the Clinton – I recently read, and I was – dumbfounded that they have not filed any documentation on the Clinton Foundation not one piece of paper not one shred of paper the Secretary of State and the President of the United States and George Bush were involved in asking for millions of dollars from Haiti and not one shred of paper has been filed for the organization that's an outrage Right, and anybody else would have the IRS convicting them let me put it to you that way. You want to talk about two sets of laws? That is just an outrage. Somebody, these are American citizens. They have an obligation to file. They have, they are, I mean, they, they have to make sure if they're, if they're connected and they're really uh, controlling members, maybe they're not. Maybe that's how they get away with it. I don't and know. certainly, like these ta it's these tax. Uh... But you know what they can't deny? Go to the mass die-off. This person who is collecting. Today is July 15th, right? Since July 1st, mass die-off of fish in Sumy region, Ukraine. Hmm, wonder what that's from. Thousands of dead fish found in a mystery. A mystery in the coastal waters of Cantanzaro, Italy. It's a mystery in Italy. Well, they'll actually report on 100 fish that are found dead as an abnormality. They'll, they'll report on it. You'll see the reports all over the place of 100 That's this right. or 100 that because that is considered an abnormality. Um, we got the headlines now here in Canada. It just came out That's right. the that flu. the mussels on the coastline are full of contagious cancers. Now, not, if you go looking through all the literature on cancer, you're not going to find contagious in the word cancer in any of the PDFs that I went through. And that's because it's not there because cancer dies with its host yet, allegedly. Not anymore. When it comes to the ocean, now we have this phenomenon where it jumped to other species. Now, that's an interesting way to get people to stop eating uh, mussels and eating clams. And if anybody doesn't understand why that story is so significant, as where I'm told is in British Columbia, Canada, the, the whole coastline was normally full, anywhere you went, of clams and mussels. And because of Fukushima, we're directly across from Japan. The ocean currents get here in 45 days, just mm -hmm. Just a few days, but anyway, here we are now faced with this horrific, nightmarish reality that are. This is the cover-up story, anyway. Is that the fish are, or the marine life, the, the shellfish are cancerous? This My is the goodness. most unconscionable cover-up in the history of humanity. Rather than tell the truth, this is this is the cancer. most. Dis rather than tell, you know what? This is why they're going to have the Olympics in Canada. Now because they said a they whole want, coastline is like this. They want a contagious cancer. You know what? You're right. I just Googled it. I said, is cancer contagious? From the American Cancer Society, cancer is not, capital words, contagious. So whatever no, they're contagious. saying, it's not contagious. And 
Who and now they're calling it leukemia. And so leukemia is a bone cancer on top of that. But it is an interesting way because you've got to realize how privileged the people are around this coastline. They can just walk down to the beach no matter where you tow and just pick up a whole bunch of clams normally. That's what they've done throughout their whole history here. But I've done the expeditions on the coastline and the majority of the species, not the majority, but literally all of them, except for a tiny uh, amount of them, maybe seven per species place where you go to you'll find seven species when there should be six thousand there or so depending on where you to some places got a couple of thousand more than other places and these are the residential species there's four million in the ocean the species are gone the four million other species didn't receive the coastline of canada and i got as you know lonnie 260 days and fifteen thousand miles of the coastline um, put in on the expeditions studying the most vulnerable part of the ocean is the tidal zone, not the whales. That but must though, have been so heartbreaking for you, Dana. To, like, that you was first amazing. Went up there when, because you have a, you know the coastline like you oh, yeah, were a fisherman, 14, right? 14,000 hours as a commercial diver underwater right. on top of that. So I got more hours underwater. So you must have been completely me. mortified when you yeah. saw it. Like for oh, me, yeah. I'd go I up there and go, wow, this is bad. Home. I have no concept of what it would look like. I had like. to see it. It's like watching your parents die. It's sad. That's so sad. Oh my this God. is watching. Yeah, this is. Do you know that I, I in my, I just took a Native American a Northwest, a Native American studies of the Native Americans of the Northwest. Th that area where you're at in Canada was part of the Salish people, right? And that whole, the whole Northwest, the Upper Northwest, is has was the only place in the North American continent where the food was so abundant. The uh, when you the before they got the horse, the horse changed everything. Prior to the horse, everybody was hunter gatherers, and they were only in the northwest was it so abundant that that's why you have the long houses that's why you have the elaborate kind of housing because they had the leisure and the time they could stay in one place. And build every communities. second house here right now has a speedboat for the ocean. Wow! I wow. mean, you, anybody who's in poverty what's the oncology rates there does everybody who's eating fish getting cancer well cancer is the last thing to show up alzheimer's dementia autism yes. diabetes heart liver yes. lung respiratory pituitary adrenaline glands show up long before cancer That's yes and they they're gone through the ceiling there was a mass die off of babies when that plume came through originally here we got dispositions of 220 million becquels of iodine 129 with a 15 million year half-life from a chain reaction not from the solar system, but from a chain reaction. That means that it's the most carcinogenic thing on the planet per liter of rainwater. And then in that exact same liter of rainwater, you got to put um, the same amount of iodine-133. And then it would have been one-third of iodine-132 in that same, same water. But we also have the numbers of a million becquels per square meter emitting now, the, the, the stuff that they're using to figure out what's there is not getting, it's, it's looking for a certain tracer. All they looked for was the iodine-129. And so everything else that was present wasn't Was ignored, exactly. For. And that's the so that leader wasn't, uh, it that was is... 220 million becquels of this, it was 100 million becquels of that, it was 50 million becquels of this. And in Germany, we throw our food on the nuclear waste site at five becquels, and in France, it's 17. And then in our rainwater, which goes where? Into our aquifers, which we do what with? We, we cook and clean and wash and shower and brush our teeth and our children. And we suck up like two or three liters a day just through those functions, not counting the drinking. So we are in serious trouble. We had 1,500 sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs in California. And the average male allegedly, per square uh, cubic meter of air, so then the average person was, uh, in studies showed, they'd be consuming around 360 man-made atoms. Now, if this was potassium-40, your body couldn't hold any more big whoop. But because it's man-made, your body sequesters it, and every single atom gets attacked for 10, 20, 30 years by white blood cells. And what does the white blood cells do? It just place the red blood cells with the oxygen molecules. And so, but not only that, Dana. It's your not body just, is like, you know, It's not just that one I'm exposure. Sure. People need to understand it's a bombardment. The radiation is not stopped. That's the thing. It's not like oh, you spill. It came true, you, and you had a bad you day. You spill no. water on yourself, and you can dry it off, and it's not right. there. We're getting it bombarded. We are not addressing. It's sequestering in your muscles, your organs, your bones. Uh, 
and it just keeps adding every day more into your what box. What do we want uh, people to do here, Dana? What do Sorry? we want? What do we want people to do? What we do want we... people to get their act together and fight for the future. Like and what does that fucking... mean? Like take to the streets, well, call their elected officials. This is the big question people say to me. Well, how? What can I do? Like I don't have. First any... off, if everybody was to go after the lawyers who say it's like a banana and a potato chip, when you read a story, everybody go and tweet. That's not true. Right, it's not just something simple, something stupid as like that. Or call them up, or call the institution that's hosting them, or where they got the degree and demand they lose their degree. That's some of the things you can do. There's many things you can do that you have to do. Like we should be planting seeds, organic seeds of every type in every community, so people would have real substance to be able to eat, and that the animals in the insect world would have some real substance. You know, because we have so much GMO now. That, that stops you from uptaking nutrients and, and uh, d because the glossophates and the formaldehydes and the GMO affects your body. And so like this whole system, we got to change because we're going to lose this. We're going to lose this planet. We're going to lose ourselves. We already lost the Pacific Ocean. This is Ocean what we're discovering animals. in yeah. Chernobyl. This is, is not the people like, that hey, survived, you know, they cannot have babies. That's the issue. It's not just, oh gosh, my kids aren't going to get the cancer, children or have they're going to be healthy. But when they grow up, there's there are high levels of sterility. Well, we, had, we had an event. This is an event. This is not like, right. oh, in the future, we got to worry about shit. This is we we had an event. This is no different than a meteorite coming at us, and we're looking at it and saying, oh, it's going to get here in a few years. The dog study shows how this works. The animal study shows how this material, when it's ingested, in just increments or just uh, single doses, we're ingesting it nonstop, but we ingested so much in that first seven months. The chain reaction is still going on down there. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. P see, the enormity of it evades every. Would right? you say that again? Because I think people miss that point. Oh, well, Chernobyl right. stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl was one third the size. Chernobyl was a 30% right. meltdown. And it's not Chernobyl just three was graphite. times more because there's Kofiana three million said three, oh, Sorry, but just to finish that conversation, but Kofiana said uh, three million children needed um, permanent treatment because of Chernobyl. But Chernobyl was just a paper towel. And so, like, everything I'm saying to the average person slowly creeps into their minds over the next couple of weeks. It's not, you don't expect this, this knee jerk reaction, but I kind of do. Because that's how I got onto this when I found out certain aspects of it that just resonated right away and said, hey, wait, that's an issue. That's a problem. I better look at this. And then you ran into all these people talking about bananas. You said, okay, it's like a banana. And you, somebody else said, it's like potato chip. And I said, okay, it's like potato chip. But then you said, well, this doesn't really. I'm finding conflicts and everywhere, so I go look up the studies and I look. I read the studies and well, the studies don't mention bananas or potato chips or walking in sunshine. People the study says it killed this studies. dog, killed that animal, killed these species. It destroyed this uh, environment. You had to store it here. You had to put it there. You couldn't let it out because the terrorists might take it and wreck your city. So, and Dana, go ahead. The thing is. All of that, all those lies roll back to why I talk about social engineering, because this is just fear mongering and war. It's really murder. It is straight out murder. This is really it's unequivocal unless they stop it. They know what they're, I mean, it's unconscious. It's like that scientist that walked out of the first secret city who said, you know what? They know exactly what they're doing. And I'm not, I, I'm going to go back home. I, they do not want my help. They're never going to talk to me. It's that same thing. Japan had, by the way, Japan had 865,000 more cancers in 2012 than it had the year before. And that was the biggest jump it's ever seen since World War II. But we haven't seen any statistics since that. I don't think but, but, it, but, but you take the thyroid, where it's a couple in a million for children. Uh, after One year after Fukushima, there was 13,600 with thyroid uh, tumors at versus out of 40,000. Not out of a million, but out of 40,000. So that was 36% out of 40,000 when it should be two or three out of a million. Right. So this is, it, and that's what the animal studies all showed was as you waited a couple of years, then the effects started to show up. And because as dogs, they have a different uh, lifespan than we do, but they're a perfect model because they have the same issues as humans. They get arthritis, they get flus, blah, blah, blah. They get the Alzheimer's and everything else, and diabetes and, and heart problems and liver problems, lung problems. 
And so this was recognized, but, they, you know, most people look at the, oh, the dogs died. They died. That's what they want to hear. They don't understand that that's the last, that's the end result. You'll liquidate your assets while you're waiting to die because of your illnesses. And then your children have nothing left over. See, that's the significance. You wait too long. But we got a meteorite coming at this planet. We got to move and we got to move now. We got to come up with technology. We got to come up with yeah, ways to mitigate right. this and filters that's and way right. to eat food. We got to come up. With, well, we can't have any of this conversation About until, it's people, not people, harm. until there's a critical mass. Well, this is the thing. This it's shocking. Is, I believe that this is why people because they won't turn us. us off, Dana, is because it is shocking. It is really, so, you know, when I, I used to say that, you know, I had my Scooby-Doo moment because when I first found out about it, I was like, er? You know, like, say what? Like, really? I used to really, honestly, up until a few years ago, how ridiculous is this? I apologize to the universe. I really believed him. I thought nuclear was really good. I really didn't believe it was harmful. I believe President Obama when he said we've taken care of it. Uh, let me give our listeners our phone number. It is 718-717-8296. You're listening to Lonnie Clark and my guest host, Dana Durnford. And it is call-in Friday. We encourage you to call in. The time is 835. And um, back to our thought about this is that I actually did think that nuclear was pretty good. And I was stunned to find out it was out of control, and they didn't have any answers. And in the last three years, I'm sorry for my phone, it's in the other room, it's just going to have to ring a few minutes. Um, in the last three years, I have discovered that all they do is miss, they lie, and they misinform people who are studying science. They are destroying what science really is. Like the IAEA really can suppress the studies of the World Health Organization. That's a true statement. There's a lot of information that they have put out on the internet that says, oh no, they're an independent organization. Not true. That is a not true statement. And there's a lot of doctors who have come and gone through the World Health Organization who have left for that reason because they're like, we can't even do basic scientific studies. They, they manipulate all the facts. This is why I thought I was very suspicious of the Zika in South America. You know how I found out about that little tidbit of uranium mining down there? I put in the name of the town on the Googles, and right after it, I wrote nuclear. That's all I did. Click. Just go, just go to PubMed and type in the same thing. And all it does is it showed it showed me articles that, that popped up that uranium to journals mining of just environmental opened up studies and type it in. Right, go to these in, go to these journals and type in the well, community the where the accident not, was, and you'll find all the studies on those yes, communities. That, that's going to. But, but there's know, twenty thousand journals, right. so don't give up on one journal. Well, I think people don't even go to journals, Dana. They don't. No, they go to Fox or CNN or MSNBC well, I mean, or wherever. They, like me, I, as simple as it is, I'm just asking people to do the simple stuff like I do. That's simpler. Go that to is the simpler to do what I'm saying, not to Google. Go to, go to PubMed or go to the journals, many of them of environmentals, and you'll find all kinds of different journals. Get on that site, go to the search engine, and type in the same words. And then you got the actual study instead of That's the conjectures. True. Why read conjectures? True. And you can see what they're, it's kind of like listening to what they say from the uh, the reporting on the news and watching C-SPAN. If you watch what they say on the floor of the Like I don't say it, I show it in my videos. Why do I do that? I do that because what I say is a conjecture as far as anybody's concerned, including myself, and the study's there. Go read the study. There's the headlines. There's everything there. But I mean, it's why would you do it any other way is, is a question I have always asked myself. And it's, it's just we didn't have access to it. We didn't grow up with that ability. That wasn't for most people, right? Because the Internet is real, still relatively on its first legs, right? We, we, you know, it hasn't evolved, really. We're still Google, Facebook, and, and, and we haven't been streaming videos on the Internet for less than 10 years. So like, we were, the Internet is still a child. It's still a tweeny, you know? And it's probably never going to mature because it doesn't matter in one context – uh, of what it could be because we, we have to deal with see the death of the Pacific Ocean is the death of the planet the death of the Pacific Ocean is is the unless we find the biggest nightmare 
Unless we, have we a find horrible a solution, unless these guys start being real scientists and try to come up to figure out how to stop the issue that they have caused by ignoring it. Like, we need these scientific brains to turn their heads around. I used to think that one, yeah. <laughs> That's how I used to think. I don't think that's good anymore. <laughs> I no longer, I no longer ever think that way either. So I'm what do you sure. think? <laughs> I think you, we should burn them. We should go back to murderers? trains where they used to have you steam engines. You think they're just murderers? You burn think they're just straight up murderers? These are murderers. Oh yeah, they're educated. They know what they're doing. They laugh about it amongst themselves. They have all these cliches amongst themselves. They have all these uh, these ha ha moments among themselves. These little insider moments where if you don't know. The actual lyrics are really good. You won't get you won't get those jokes. But if you know it even reasonably well, you can probably get the jokes. And these are nasty, just disgusting, pathetic jokes. The people that come out and talk about carbon and how nuclear is going to mitigate it, these people are not naive or gullible. James Hansen is not naive and gullible or stupid. Okay, and what he's got done in the 350.org and the rest of them, what they're doing, they're not naive. They're not gullible. They know exactly what the end game is for what their narrative is rather than use the real truth. That nuclear is the furthest thing from carbon. It's boiling a million gallons of water a minute per reactor. How could something like that be carbon free? Right, exactly. That's a billion gallons per glass of water, 60 million glasses per minute per reactor. Do the math. It's, and then the eggs and larvae and small fry sucked up and killed. Three million fish killed in just one reactor. So from the intakes, Big fish, you know, big dead fish. zones all around like, and, and the reactor just, zone. There's de this is the heat. radiates all the insects at all the dumps, all the larvae, all those mutated insects are going into the community and lakes and estuaries and rivers and food chain, and so it's just and you can't contain it. You're boiling and the radiation, the fuel rods are perpetually have to be put in the water. That water boils off 120,000 liters per pound a day into the community, full of thousands. Of americium, neptuniums, and plutoniums, and uraniums. The reactors run on uranium. There's no cesium cores. There's no iodine cores, folks. There's uranium cores. And so when they talk about cesium, that's just a tracer. It means nothing, only the sense of you're in trouble. And that thousands of other counts per minute are there, you're not going to register because they're only registering one. But that's what a scientist, scientists extrapolate. Nuclear is the stupidest thing imaginable. You can't get rid of it once you got it. And we got it. Now we got it. We got to deal with it. We can't get rid of it. But we got to deal with it. We can't contain it because we have to vent it. If we try to contain it, the noble gases just need oxygen to detonate. At some point in the future, the cast will leach, oxygen will get in there, and it'll detonate. That's the, what happened to Whipshire. It's the exact same thing. And like when you put stuff in a salt flat, like cans, they're gone in about five years. They turn turn into little pecks of rust in about five years. That was shown in study after study after study. So when you put these things out into the desert, and that's what happens to them. It, and so it's all meant, they want to put it all in Yucca Mountain, then Yucca Mountain melts down the whole friggin' mountain, turns into a chain reaction. That's what happens if it goes wrong. That's why WIP is such a crazy, stupid idea. This is why they try to bury it two miles underground, because they figured that might stop the chain reaction from making it to the surface. But it doesn't. You can't. You can't stop the stuff from coming up through it. That's just the way it is. See, a gas like, you know, like tritium, or not tritium, but most gases will leach right out of a met mental, uh, mental, metal tank. That's how gases work. And it's something that people take for granted is not really for granted. Like your, your hairspray canister, that'll leach out after a number of years. That'll disappear on its own, right through the can itself, not through the, the mechanical parts. Right. So, we, right. so, like this stuff is in our environment. It killed every animal throughout the history. There's no cure for it. There's no way to stop it. And we we have the ability, where that one generation, where that one point in time, where that one single moment, that one little little blip in the universe, where we can produce North America alone over 4,000 studies a day, 4,340 peer review academic studies are published every day. If we took that horsepower and went to work on solving and resolving some of our issues, we could, but we won't. We've studied every aspect of nuclear because every they, element. Yeah, they go. know it's going to cost more than what we've done in nature. I mean, it is really, it's so outrageous. It is just, it, it, it's just more. I honestly, I. 
it is beyond this is the thing the level of denial of nuclear harm joke. like if we just look at like this closed nuclear power plant like down in San Onofre they're they're, they're all the they're still stuck with everything there till the end of time it's sitting it's right on the, the coast of the Pacific coast and they're allowing them to store it in containers that are the rest of the world stores it in containers that are 18 inches thick the United States does it in half inch thick containers look and, if I took a pound of it and went down to New York and in increments of 20 minutes, I can kill 1,500 people every 20 minutes in a big theater, pull the bodies there, kill everybody in New York in a short period yeah, of time. Yeah, but when you say statements that, like that, that France, you know, people will go, oh, you're fear-mongering. That's fear-mongering. No, it's not fear-mongering. How can you have a conversation about I, – I can hear – I can understand it. But, so you can't have a conversation about this without fear-mongering. Well, that's not I, it. I, that's I, radiation. That's I, I disagree. Sounding, with sounding that way, right? You know what? I talk to my kids about it because my my children. I have adult kids, and they don't want to talk about it. I'm like, look, you know what? We have got to talk about, you know, where to live and how to. And you have to pay attention to what's going on because, unfortunately, that is the world we live in. That's called being an adult and you know being a responsible parent to your children. That's why I can't ignore it. I'm still your mom. I'm not going to ignore it and go, oh, who cares about my grandkids? Who cares about my grown kid? Although and my daughter lives in Portland, Oregon. Stop eating fish, Oregon, and stop you know. eating yes. stuff, get off the coastline. How do you tell people to get out of these communities? Well, you don't. My child eats sushi all the time, and she lives in Portland, Oregon, right downstream. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're eating it from the Pacific, it's not a nail in your coffin. It's not a screw in your coffin. It's a rivet in your coffin. You're Every not- single fish. You are sealing your fate for sure. Yeah, well, not only that, they're going that to, to liquidate your essence. Mongering. People will say that is for sure. Oh, well, I back it up because every animal died in every study and that the ocean is full of it and that the amount that went into the ocean is undisputed anymore and that I research it exclusively. Mass animal deaths. Show an extinction. The number one thing that happens, massive right. animal So they can call me fear-mongering because they're naive and gullible and, and because of the media and because of the way they were introduced it is. Tens of thousands of dead because fish found in a river in Quebec can't. I can't help people like that. Nobody can help people people like that well, I can't waste my time on people that don't want to learn are not going to try if they want to learn my types of conversations are the ones that where people have to seek out and that I, I don't usually you don't usually hear me talking like you do but to, when you have a conversation with other people and, and people are saying one thing you know they should be saying another thing in, in reality the most important thing we should be talking about is this is an extinction event period and that we better get our act together and we better move. That's what, that's the, this is not just all talk about nuclear. This is an extinction event, period. We've never seen this in history. We've never seen anything like this. And so why are all the experts coming out and telling us like a banana and that there's no harm, that is less than Chernobyl when it's three full molten reactors? Why are they saying they got to spend fuels at a number four when the building was blown apart, where the fuel rods were too? That building is part of the building is missing. It's the same thing for number three. Yet they they say they're going to get spin fuel out of number three. Why are we sitting here and allowing the fable to be perpetrated and arguing about the fable instead of arguing about the truth? Well, just look at the current news. If you actually look at what they're saying from Fukushima, I mean – what they're actually saying when they get when you hear reports from there, these are scientists that are reporting these things. Over and over and over. You know, I mean, the radioactive gas. They uh, officials have oh, admit deadly Fukushima meltdown cover-up. Tepco's president said that. His, their president said he revealed an unpardonable breach of trust. This is a grave issue. That's what they are saying. See, and we don't themselves. argue with Tepco. We now, 2016, pictures. five years later, they're admitting it. Well, but- we got 5,000 pictures, official pictures from Tepco's website, and we got the, the, the models of those reactor buildings. We don't care what Tepco says. Tepco is a corporation. And so we, our job is not to listen to Tepco or argue about it. Our job is to look at the pictures, right, look at the exactly, diagram of the exactly. buildings and say, look, this one doesn't match up with that one. And yes, Tepco lied because they told you that, but here's the building. But their involvement is to expose that lie every time they open their mouth, and that's what we ended up doing because that was what, the, what, what it was. And so every step of the way, they said there'd be no harmful effects. And we've had to fight our way and up. you know what? But the people are being with screwed because do you know we that the citizens of Fukushima were denied? They wanted, uh, they sued TEPCO for 100 yen. That's all they wanted or whatever. You know, they just wanted 100, I think it's called yen or whatever their money is. They only wanted, it was a token payment. Their court said, no, TEPCO is not responsible to pay you. And that to me was like spoke 
volumes. Well, by General Electric and the rest They're of not going to have it in a legal court that says that the, the nuclear industry is accountable. They're not going right. to do it. So if, if Chevy uh, gives you, buy, buys you a car, or you bought a car off Chevy, and the steering wheel is, de is uh, defective, and you drive down the road, you smash into something, nothing happens. Okay, it happens to somebody else, and something happens, maybe, right? Maybe it happens to 10 people's cars, crashes. They say, okay, well, I got a problem. Well, these reactors, they knew they had those problems, and they, they didn't fix them. They didn't even try to fix them. They knew these that you didn't put the reactor pools on the roof where, if in case you have a meltdown, because the reactor's biggest problem was they could have a meltdown. And so some of them had meltdowns, just like some cars will crash because there's a default. But whose responsibility was it? It was Chevy or Ford or Mercury's whose cars were defective. They called, they had a recall, brought all the cars in, they had to pay for it, all people sued them class action lawsuits, blah, 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 blah. Nuclear power, when they do it, no, the courts come out and say that a judge comes out and says no. Even Sorry. more incredulous than One that. One single person now holds the fate of the world. And how many of these people have been shown to corrupt? You know what? This is even how incredulous it is. Even after that, San Onofre nuclear power plant, after Fukushima got caught trying to put in a part that didn't belong into their reactor because it was cheaper. So they bought it because it was cheaper and figured they could retrofit it. That's how insane these people are. I mean, and it is, it's across the board, Dana. They have absolutely no regard for human life, human health, any animal, any planet. They are just sick with murderous greed. Is We've really got an extinction is. event playing out in the Atlantic or Pacific, and this is um, not going to be able – people can't hide this away anymore. They can't, that's why Tevco come out in a minute that they had their meltdowns to start that dialogue. That's why I was arrested when it came off the oceans because it showed that extinction event. That's right. That yes. is why. That is why, Dana. But the extinction event has trickled now over into the animal kingdom and on the land and the insect kingdom kingdom on the land into the bird population on the ocean and to the, the marine and mammal population to an extinction event where the flan and the flora and the bases and the bio of the, the, the biota of the ocean itself, that's what you want to call it, the, the billion creatures per glass of salt water has literally trickled down to just tiny, tiny percentages. And that the bigger animals, like fish, don't die of cancer. Fish fish die of natural death because cancer takes a long time to manifest. They might get tumors on now, but yeah. fish don't die of, like... Right, they'll like, have the like, tumors. That's why they see the tumors on people the People say, well, fish are just swimming around. Yeah, but they're way up the food chain. You know what, I Dana? went into the tidal po pools, where, which is the nursery, where the most vulnerable species. Is your child more vulnerable to, to drugs than you are? Yeah. Is your child more vulnerable to toxins than you are? Yeah. Why? Because your child is smaller, yeah? Okay, because they're developing, yeah? Well, that's the same thing why I went to the tidal pools, because that's the nursery. And that was wiped out. And then I was attacked and demonized. And you know why? Do you know why, Dana? It's exactly the thing that we're talking about. The, the yeah. same reason they denied the people in Fukushima even 100 yen or whatever it is. The same reason because they do not want any legal precedent. That's why, That's right. This is why in your case they refused to allow you to refer to any of it. Fiji uh, last I mean, year just I, finally gave I am not incorrect. You have been barred from talking about it or talking about any of those people. You know what I'm I saying? I've not mentioned her name. I'm not allowed to defend myself. I'm and not, not allowed even to in use court, in words court they've thrown as context. Out. But this is the point. Everything in court. The judge says banana potato chips are like nuclear fuel, and I can't even use that as context. Right. And I mean, that's a setup. Right. I'm being taken apart and taken down right. and destroyed, and I got vilified in the but media. But the reason is. And no is one's. The yeah, reason it's the same, it's the same. They're not going to have any, They. it's the 100% denial that radiation causes harm. And they are denying the negative effects of radiation by 90%. They can't People do it much need to get with it and demand the truth out of every elected official, every agency. We need to make comments at the EPA and say, are you joking? Absolutely not. Do not raise those radiation limits. People need to make those comments. You need to go to the EPA. And we need to talk to the NRC and make our comments to the NRC. A few comments goes a long way. And there's websites. Dana Dermford has 
the nuclearproctologist.org. In the states, we have radcast.org. We have sananofresafety.org. And the usual beyond nuclear, kind of the semi, like even, what is Greenpeace? If you look up Greenpeace, it says it's, in, 19, in 2011, they wrote an article that said nuclear is super, super bad. 2011, have we heard anything out of any of those people at all? So it's 2016. Are they jumping up and down? Because they still can't sell the meat or drink the milk in the UK because of Chernobyl. They just opened the first water uh, fishery two years ago in Sweden because of Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was just a tiny reactor. It's easy to look it up. It's easy to verify. It's easy to certify these assertions. Anything I said, everything I say. Chernobyl is three 100% meltdowns, but there was 15 reactors in that coastline that went in the station blackout. This is where they lost the cooling function. Now what they're doing to resolve that, because I know we're coming to the end of the show, just how important it is to understand the lie down the road for people, is that they built pools uphill now where they got three days of water. Now, why would they do that if they don't, if losing power and losing the water is not an event? Because now they're claiming that losing the power and losing the water at the reactors is not an event. Oh, we'll be okay. And we we're going to have three days of storage. Well, they didn't get power. Look, if, if a tornado came through your neighborhood and somebody was sat there, uh, you can probably get a long extension cord and run it over and plug in a generator or something like that. But we're talking 400 kilometers of coastline with tore apart like a wood chipper. They couldn't get power into these reactors even, uh, you know, months later. So Wait, they lost Anna, their inventory. You're talking technical stuff that people. They lost their inventories. They lost care. all these. This is I'm the getting thing. there. They lost their inventories. They lost all their reactors, and then we're talking about thousands of Chernobyls worth of material. A Chernobyl was five percent of its inventory. You're missing out on the brainwashing. I know you're talking. I know. Facts. I know. I'm, well, the brainwashing makes people just. The average like, person check won't out. come and listen to this. They're not even going to try. Well, they can't, no, they that's can't not true. See, it. for me, Dana, I reject that because I want to reach. I want this show so to I. meet thousands of people. Yeah. And I reject that, that, that they're road. not going to listen. I've been down that road. You can't. But who's going to? The average person can't grasp it. They get lost and they you know feel what? defeated. You know what? They're going to fucking grasp it, and we're going to be their lifeboat yeah, because yeah, very I, soon I people are going to drop off. What What's going on in St. Louis? People, people are do, dropping off like flies. People already. get the nuances once they, if they're in, if they listen all the way into the conversation all the way up to that point, they would have got a lot of those nuances. They would have got a lot of those uh, little details. Would have made sense. Would have resonated for them. And because I know that because I have deep, long conversations with people. And it's only at that point can you use the, the in-depth. And it's at that point where if they have a chance, they'll ask you questions back that are on target. And so, like, you know, you can't you can't sugarcoat it and you can't just pretend that it's this or pretend it's that. You actually got to give people the real data because if you if you try to make Okay, so if we form, have the data, what are we asking people to do with the data? This is the thing. This is the frustration. They, they, need, they need to rally around someone and continue to learn. And so they need to find that person that they feel they can trust and that is telling them similar stuff that I'm telling them without and being aggressive enough to, that they can understand it. Then, then you know, I mean, it's such a complicated subject. I have to I, say, I, I'm I at this say, point help, after three years yes, of doing help, this, I, I don't know how you've done help, it for yeah, so yeah. long. I'm angry. I don't want to have to What do I put my fate into out there? I don't. How well, come? I mean, that's because why every, you study it like I can, like, yeah, well, I, <laughs> That's why I, I can't send people somewhere is the problem. You know, what do I do? I don't stop. Support me. But that sounds so bad when you say that, right? But who's leading the charge? Who done the whole coastline? Well, who wants to go to bat and who's willing to go to bat and who needs to go to bat? Find that person is all I'm saying. <laughs> well, this is why you're you talking. Right but I, what I'm saying is I want to expand our conversation. Into better get the job. I'm just saying we better How, get What can we do one. with all this information? After we get the information... I, you know, how do we organize? Who do we demand? This is the frustration of why people check out. But you know what? what we have 20 we'll, seconds left. We have everybody to like, tweet We out. have to talk about this next Friday. Focus Thanks, Dana Durnford, for joining me this oh. Friday. And uh, put your courage feet on. Dana's website is the Nuclear Proctologist. Thank you for joining us. I wish somebody had called in. Maybe next Friday. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.
listening to Moosey Ride.